Welcome to Dialysis. My name is Kristen and I'm the unit clerk at the Billings DCI. You have been diagnosed with end-stage renal disease. While this is a lifestyle change, it doesn't mean you have to quit living. Our motto at DCI is that you, the patients, are our reason for existence. So let's take a look at what your first treatment will look like. My name is Paul Van Cleve. I've been on dialysis about two years, I think. When I first started, I was in a wheelchair. Then I graduated to a walker, and now I just use my cane over there. I've been on dialysis going on four years. When the techs come and get me, I go in and I weigh myself, wash my hands and wash my access, and go sit down in the chair and brace yourself. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> On my first day, I wish someone had told me it was not going to be as horrible as I thought. Uh, they just went about their business quietly, and, and I thought, well, this isn't such a big deal. I had a fear of it hurting really bad. I didn't know much about dialysis when I started, but once they started using the needles, it, it hurt a little bit until I started getting scar tissue. And while I was on the machine, it didn't hurt. No, my first treatment in dialysis wasn't a bit painful. I had taken a tour of this uh, dialysis center earlier scared the hell out of me. And when I actually came to take dialysis, it was just a piece of cake, and it's been that since. Uh, when I was younger, I used to be a heavy smoker, but I don't do that now. I smoke, you know, and there's things like that that I gotta be very careful of. So, you know, there's limitations, but, you know, there's, there's ways of, you know, being cautious and being careful that you can still do those, and it's, it's nice. Oh, I think I can live my daily schedule as it is now with dialysis. I felt a lot better after I started dialysis within like the first couple weeks. Like I've, I had a lot of fluid on and they were able to get me, get me feeling better again. Dialysis has helped me uh, generally feel more comfortable and I'm very satisfied with it. My daily life, the restrictions I have is um, not now during the summer, it's um, liquids and uh, it's kind of a, you know, uh, more being careful. So it's okay. Um, I got to limit myself and my clothes and how would it now? In a way, it's nice, you know, if it's not fluid, and I got ice that helps me, popsicles, raw. The staff goes out of their way here to make me comfortable. I will say you meet some very interesting people here, uh, staff as well as uh, uh, patients. I have missed treatments before. I feel really bad af after I miss a treatment. I fill up with fluid and it's hard to breathe and my legs swell up really bad so it's hard to walk and it's not a good idea to skip treatments. <laughs> Other than being sort of immobile, it doesn't feel any particular problem. I, there's no pain. Actually, I tend to go to sleep if I'm not watching television. I watch the Food Network, and I just sit there and watch TV, or I take a nap. <laughs> The chairs are comfortable. Some people bring a pillow to put their arm on, but 
I've found the chairs are comfortable enough. I feel really good now that I've started dialysis before I, I would get really sick and I, I had a lot of fluid on me and I was happy to start dialysis. <laughs> we keep a sterile environment for our patients, so our techs and nurses will be wearing white coats at all times. While our techs are trained to help prepare and monitor your treatment, our licensed nurses are over your entire care and medications. Make sure that you use the restroom before your treatment so that we don't have to stop the machine in the middle of your treatment. This can affect how adequate your dialysis is for the day. Before you go into the unit, make sure you have things that will make you comfortable. Here at Billings DCI, we have several nurses and techs to assist you during your treatment. Let's introduce you. My name is Wayne Staley. I am a clinically certified hemodialysis technician. I am just one of the techs here. Um, I will be bringing you in on your first day and I will have you weigh, wash your access in your hands. I will bring you to your chair, take your blood pressure, temperature, collect all your vitals, get you ready for the nurse, um, get you all settled in with your blankets, take care of your machine, get your machine programmed. After all that's taken care of, I'll pass you off to the RN and she will put you on. My name is Angie Michelson and I am one of the charge nurses. Assessments are done before and after treatment by a nurse. We will listen to your lungs, your heart rate, um, we'll check your legs, ask you if you feel like you have any swelling. We're trying to assess you for how much fluid that we should program the machine for. We want to know um, how much you weigh when you first start and then we'll compare that weight from your previous weight or your dry weight. A dry weight is your, it's uh, an estimate of what we feel like you would be with, say your kidneys were adequately getting rid of fluid. So um, your dry weight's what we want you to be, want, want you to leave at when you leave. We want to listen to your lungs before and after treatment. Um, if your lungs have like crackles or if you're wheezy, that could be a sign that you've got extra fluid on. Um, and then we listen to it afterward, after your treatment, and sometimes your lungs will sound better, and then we can tell that we've removed an appropriate amount of fluid. As a social worker, I help the patients with their insurance and financial needs. I also help with Medicare and Medicaid and other things like that. I try to do those things so they don't have to deal with them on their own. The symptoms the patient should alert the staff to while they're Getting dialysis would be um, cramping anywhere. Some patients will cramp in legs or abdomen um, in their back. If they start feeling dizzy or lightheaded, some patients may want to know why they have to have a fistula instead of using just your veins. With a fistula, it's a, a vein that's connected to an artery, so the artery can out, allows more blood flow through the fistula. So we're able to um, process your blood longer and faster. Along with the labs, I also do vascular access. Your fistula, your catheter, whatever it is, that's your lifeline. That is your lifeline. You have to take care of it. Just um, don't let people take blood pressures on that side. Don't let people draw blood on that side. If this is your first dialysis treatment, um, your treatment time is typically shorter than what your normal treatment time will be. Um, a lot of patients will start out with a two hour treatment, the first treatment, and then uh, two and a half hours the second treatment, and then three hours the third treatment. Expect your dialysis treatment to last anywhere from three to four hours, depending on how well we are able to clean the toxins out of your blood, or if you put on too much fluid in between treatments. Sometimes the physicians will need to extend your treatment time so that we're able to pull more fluid off. I want you to feel comfortable asking questions to people like me that, that aren't um, a part of your care while you're on the floor. Yes, I'm in and out, but that doesn't mean that I'm not here for you just as much as anybody else. So I want you to feel free to ask anybody, anybody, any questions that you might have or anything that we can do to make you more comfortable here. We're trained, we're experienced, and we have um, the knowledge to help you. The anxiety level after the first, even after the first treatment, is way down. Almost every patient that's come into dialysis that hasn't come on the unit before to even look around um, are very anxious and nervous and scared and that's very normal. One of the first things we do when you come in is we'll do your, you'll weigh and wash your hands and wash your fistula at the sink. Um, 
will check your blood pressure standing and sitting and the nurse will listen to your lungs and your heart and then um, ask and assess if you have any swelling or anywhere that you've noticed so and how you're breathing so how are you doing today Stephen? doing good doing great. good any shortness of breath or anything no, no. no good do you mind if i listen to your lungs please okay listen in the back here sound good Take a listen right. to your heart and we'll take a look at his fistula here. And you can feel the blood whooshing through. Also listen to it with the stethoscope so we can hear it. We're listening for any whistling, um, any different sounding. We don't want to hear uh, like a pulsation sound. You want to hear a whoosh, whoosh. And Stephen, you listen to yours at home also, don't you? All the time. All the time, good. I always feel it to you to make sure it's moving. Yeah. Right there. It's just a thumping. Yeah, that's good. And then if you ever come, it, like wake up in the morning and you can't feel anything or you don't hear anything, um, you want to call the clinic if we're open or um, go to the emergency room right away because we want to get that um, blood flowing back through and the physicians or doctor um, we'll probably have to do a procedure to get that clot out if it's clotted off. So. Yeah. so we have different um, ways to clean your fistula. Most of the patients use the chlorhexidine swabs. Um, we have some, if they have an allergy to that, we can use um, Accept or alcohol. We have different different stuff we can try. Um, typically the first stuff we'll use is the, the swabs though. So. It's really important that during your treatment you don't cover your access arm or your lines at all. Um, the staff need to be able to monitor that um, to make sure that one of your needles doesn't get dislodged or the tape doesn't get stuck on your blanket or anything. Okay, so we're gonna bleed the blood down to the end of the tube, and then we flush it with a little saline, and it might feel a little cold, but it should not burn um, or hurt, and if it does, let us know right away, because that can mean the needle might just not be in the right place, and we might need to adjust it a little bit. Some patients will get um, heparin during their treatment. Um, Steven doesn't get any heparin, that just helps prevent the clotting through the system while we're doing dialysis so you don't lose red blood cells. So I'm just going to double check that all the parameters and everything is set appropriately to the physician prescription and his um, weight's been calculated already and everything looks good and then we have a couple chambers here on the machine. We're gonna check to make sure that they're full. Now we're gonna connect, yep. So I'm gonna start the pump, and you can actually watch the blood flow the, through the arterial line, the bottom needle. We're taking the blood that has the waste products and the extra fluid in. And it's going through this chamber, and it goes through here and up through your kidney. The, they call it the dialyzer. So this will clean um, your blood and pull fluid out. And then after it goes through the dialyzer, it comes back up here and it goes through this chamber and then you'll see it come back through you and there's saline in this whole system. The machines beep a lot, so don't be afraid. They're very noisy sometimes. Uh, the first beeping says it detected blood in here, so you've officially started your time for treatment. Dialysis is a lifestyle change, but you don't have to stop living. At DCI, our goal is to make your transition to dialysis as smooth as possible. We look forward to assisting you with your continued care. See you soon.